someone was coming to me now and asking for advice in this uh, as how to be in that role, I think I would be having to say to them, think seriously about going into it. Because in many ways, you grow into it. You grow into it. You grow into it. Uh, you don't learn A, B, C, D and E. Uh, but again, repeating it, the rules that I drew up for myself was, one, I didn't want to be anywhere. And, and it was quite funny at times if it wasn't so serious. Uh, I didn't want to be anywhere. Uh, people in Derry would have known this man was an IRA volunteer, this man was IRA, this was uh, one of these uh, uh, OC uh, officer commanding IRA. I didn't know any of that stuff. Or put it this way, whatever I knew was minuscule in relation to the dogs in the street is the phrase we use in Northern Ireland. So the, the first point was I, I didn't want ever, because of the Tavistock knowledge and the Irish group relations knowledge and because and because and because, I had to keep that out uh, simply because if anywhere in those 20 years someone was able to say, well, Duddy was there, he heard that, he was listening, or whatever the reasons were, so that was the first thing. Not that that guaranteed immunity because people get things like that wrong and they tell uh, incorrect stories. The second thing was that I would never, ever be party to taking life. And by that I mean uh, uh, the, the idea of transporting war material or something of that nature or there's, there's a bomb or my car can be used, any version of it, right? Uh, and the third corollary to that was that uh, if I was to accidentally come across a piece of knowledge, it was not, I, I, I ran away from that piece of knowledge. I didn't want to know and I didn't know. Uh, because that was not my role. Uh, but as I said, I got to this point, it, got, it, it seriously got to the point where I had to refuse to think, to think, not to act out, to think of various areas. Because that thinking, and I please say it's rubbish, that thinking somehow became transmitted or was acted out. And I used to protect myself if I saw someone um, who may have had a reputation, rightly or wrongly, uh, of being somebody who was, uh, it's too loose a phrase to say, knowing to kill people. Uh, and I saw them 100 metres up the street, I would turn and go up the side street simply to keep me out of their mental psyche and their thoughts. Some of the, you, the people who may listen to this, if you want to begin to work on that this basis, you have to A, know where you're coming from, B, know where you're going, and don't blur the boundaries. Number one, I was very, very good at my job. Number two, I had a historical uh, a vision of Ireland. Number three, I was t could be trusted. I wasn't looking for media. I don't know how many books, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 books on uh, my part in Irish freedom and so forth. I did not desire, uh, in fact, I made a, a rule that the Republican movement and the British government uh, and no one else was able to discuss or disclose it. So taking all those things into account, then there was quite practical things that happened. The only reason anyone, anyone, is useful to anyone, and it's a crude way of putting it, is that they are doing a service for that person. So bottom line, if I had not been useful to the IRA, I would have been disappeared. I don't mean, sorry, wrong word, take that back. I would have not have been there. If I was not useful to the British government, I would not have been there. If I was a message carrier, they had a thousand dollars. So it was the interpretations of the dialogue that was happening or not happening. And let your people watching this decide what level that was at. So basically, I was here because I was useful.
So, tension between Martin McGuinness and me was uh, possibly not helped by the fact that if you are a member of, uh, 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 for the sake of this discussion, and people watching the, the video will understand it, let's use the word terrorist, right? Every moment is surveyed. Every piece of knowledge of you is known. The satellite cameras, the bugs in the cars, the, the, those pictures you hear about um, CIA watching everything and the, the phone recording and all those things. Most of them are true. Uh, not true to the extent that they portrayed in the movies, but most of them are true. So what happens is, as you are in a cell that's been haunted by this massive machine to make sure you don't blow up uh, the, the new Twin Towers or something like that. Paranoia sets in. Now paranoia, when you get to understand it and know it, you can almost slice it. And the people who work in this field understand that quite clearly. So with the paranoia, uh, the, the, the trick of the, the governments is to create paranoia within the terrorist cell and by doing that uh, the, the, the almost the only door out of that is for A to suspect B to suspect C to suspect A and so forth. Now one of the ways of relieving that tension is if you can get an outside victim. So as I was never a member of the IRA, never a member of any of uh, the 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 groups that uh, the the whole provisional situation i was outside and it was extremely difficult for people like mcginnis adams kelly name all the people that you want to name to actually permit me to exist because that's how paranoia works and and in many ways i was protected uh, by that leadership uh, not for my sake, but for their own needs sake. And it was equally protected by the British government and equally protected by elements of uh, the security services in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland. And that's how the system worked. May I should have told you, what does protection mean? It doesn't mean uh, an armed guard anywhere. What it means is that if somebody for very good reasons decided to report that my car was in Clonus or Cork or, or some part of uh, London or Belfast, as that come in to security headquarters, somebody combed it out. That's what protects. Continually, uh, the British uh, had to trust me, even though they had their third or fourth or fifth man. And I had to equally trust them. And in turn, there was a, a code of trust uh, within the IRA that if I was, uh, for example, if I was meeting uh, in a, a Belfast hotel or a county down or wherever it was, never was I asked where or how. And if I had been asked, I wouldn't have said, but I never was asked. So there was all that trust, but that trust had to also have boundary walls of of of, of uh, guardianship and why you can give you could talk about it for the rest of your life and the answer is dead clear people wanted it to happen i think it would be foolish na naive for me to say i was not a player but i'm strongly trying to say to you that if the british said we will never release uh, a long cash attorney right i was not interpreting that that oh, the british said they don't worry about it and so forth so you really it was a judgment position all the time and the question you asked about role and playing yes they did interchange so when i would say to the british you have an opportunity to stop this war in Ireland and come to an honourable settlement. That's the player, right? When I'm reporting that the IRA uh, is not morally beaten, 
that the IRA is not defeated, that the IRA have enough arms to keep going forever and the day that is the other side of the road. It's when ego takes over and I decide I can take it a stage beyond what I've just described, that's when it becomes out of role. And it's understanding that role that's important. The British wanted it, the Republican movement wanted it, the various governments wanted it, ultimately the government of the Republic of Ireland and the Church wanted it, and eventually uh, unionism, i.e. In the, in the course of Dr Ian Paisley and Peter Robson, saw the benefits of it. So basically I was on a tide which was flowing in a particular direction.